Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and today I'm doing another Red Power tutorial. Uh, today's tutorial will be on the many kinds of logic circuits available that LRAM has put in for us. Um, anyone who's used uh, redstone wiring a bit knows that uh, there's certain little tricky things you can do to get your wires to do like neat little tricks for you. Uh, some simple examples are AND gates and OR gates, and there's a lot more complicated things that you can build, and uh, unfortunately they're pretty large and unwieldy, and LRM has made a mod that basically condenses them down into one small piece. And that's the piece of red power that I'm going to show you today, is the uh, redstone logic circuits. So you can see right now I have a furnace going and I'm cooking some stone, and for each piece of stone that you have in your furnace you get two stone wafers. So let's get started and check out all the different cool stuff you can make with this. So you can see I've just given myself a couple stone wafers, some redstone, and some redstone torches. Um, these three items are going to basically make up all that you're going to need for your logic circuits. You don't need any of the Red Power World mod items, so that means you don't need to have uh, the World mod installed in order to take advantage of this. Uh, but the World mod is cool and I definitely recommend using it if you want to check out some of the other really neat stuff she's adding. Uh, but for now, you only need this stuff. Um, so this is your stone wafer, obviously, right here. And if you place one down with a piece of redstone on top, you get a stone wire. This is a component in many, many of the uh, logic circuits. Uh, the other component that you can build are stone anodes with the recipe you just saw. You can also get a stone pointer. like that, a stone cathode, which looks like this, and that's pretty much it. So these four components will come together to build pretty much all of your logic circuits. So let's get building on one of the most basic logic circuits we can, the AND gate. Alright guys, so before I build an AND gate, why don't I build one for you in the world of Minecraft? Um, this is definitely a little bit big, but I made it just so you guys can see exactly how it functions. An AND gate will only um, activate its output when both um, inputs are turned on. So I put two inputs here, a lever and a lever, and I have some redstone torches on top. Um, and you can see that right now the output, which is this guy, is turned off. So there's no output because these guys are both off. By activating one input, it does not turn on. By activating the other input, it still doesn't turn on. But if you activate both inputs, then that guy turns on. And that's what an AND gate is. Both this one and this one need to be on. So let's build one in red power and see how much smaller it is. And there we go, an AND gate. Same functionality for the most part. Let's go place them down on the ground next to this one, and as you can see, much more condensed. Um, now this guy has three inputs actually, um, and this could have easily been changed to have three inputs by having another input, say, here, but I didn't do that, so no big deal. Um, and you don't need to use all three inputs, you just right click on the block to determine which inputs are active. So you can see that these guys here are changing based on how often I'm right clicking. And if you run some redstone wire to it, you'll see how the redstone wire is connecting. However, if you use red power wire, you'll quickly discover that only the inputs that are active on the AND gate will be connected with the power, with the red wire. And it updates in real time. So it should make it pretty easy for you to determine which side of your AND, gates, your AND gate here is um, in use based on those torches. And if we put levers here now, now let's just run a cable out here like this. Activate one. Whoops. Don't forget you need your guys on the side there like that. Activate one. Activate both. And your output is on. And if you want to have three inputs required, you just run it like this. So now with just these two on, it doesn't work. But all three on, it does. So that's an AND gate. You need all inputs on in order for the output to be on. The next design is a rather simple one. It's an OR gate. How does an OR gate work? Well, 
either this one or this one or both will activate the output. So either one or the other needs to be on in order for it to work. An OR gate, pretty simple and straightforward. Let's build a red power version. So here we go with the OR gate. This is the design that you'll need to do, and you'll get your OR gate. And it works pretty simple and pretty straightforward and on par with the AND gate. You can toggle your sides by right-clicking on it. And of course, your redstone wire will only connect to the sides that are active. Pretty spiffy. And the output works the same again. Any one of these guys can be toggled on to toggle the output. So again, the OR gate's pretty simple and straightforward, um, but it's nice to have that little compact system. The next circuit that I'm showing you guys is a personal favorite of mine, as described here, is an RS NOR latch. This is basically a memory cell, and it pretty much remembers its input from one blip to the next, um, and you don't need to use levers to activate it. So if you ever want a way to push a button and have something stay open, for example, or if you want to push a button and have something stay turned on, uh, this is the way you would do it with an RS NOR latch. Um, basically what happens is when a redstone input comes in on this block, it disables this torch, disabling this output, and lets this tor torch turn on, enabling this output. So anything going over here would turn on. Let's do something just to make it easier to see. So I just put down a couple of red power lights, and you can see this is the output. So you'd run this wire wherever you want things to be kept on until somebody comes over and pushes this button. It's gonna turn off that light and keep that one on. Even though this isn't a lever, it's gonna keep this on. That's how a RS NOR latch works. And then we push this button, and it disables the left output and turns on the green again. So that's an RS NOR latch, and it really makes for some really cool designs, because it basically remembers the last input it got based on where the input came in. The other thing is that, um, you know, we can push this to switch it to the blue input, and no amount of pushing this anymore is going to change anything. That blue is going to stay on until this green input is switched. And then the same thing, no amount of pushing this anymore is going to make a difference. And there's the pattern for the RS latch. Pretty cool, pretty straightforward. Let's pop it down here and see how it goes. Let's say, yeah, I'll just put it here, that's fine. So you can see. Now, one other thing I haven't mentioned to you guys yet is you're gonna wanna know how to make a uh, another device. Let me set it up real quick. Luckily, it's a very easy pattern. A stick and a piece of iron gives you a screwdriver. And you can use your screwdriver to right click and rotate these uh, logic circuits. So you can do the same with this guy. Cool. Um, so here's your RS NOR latch. So you can see I just wired this guy up and it's pretty much the same design that I did over here. Um, so you've got your two redstone torches and some wiring in between. It's got two redstone torches and some wiring in between. And you connect the devices you want powered to the blocks that look like they have little redstone torches on them. And to activate this guy, let's go over to the side that's not active. And by pressing the button, you'll see it toggles. And again, no amount of pressing this button is going to make any difference. So same functionality as that big circuit we just did. Just obviously in one block size as opposed to, you know, four. Or five or six. So a pretty awesome little device. So real quick, let's look, circle back to our OR gate. Remember, the output is on when any one of the inputs is on, or both. Let's change this into a NOR gate. It's actually really simple. Take a redstone torch, put it right here, and you've now got a NOR gate. So let's run some uh, wiring here just to make it apparent from a distance. So now what happens is the input is only on when both outputs are off. Watch, turn any one of these guys on, or both, and the input stays off. So in, or, in other words, both inputs have to be off for the output to be on. That's a NOR gate, kind of the opposite of an OR gate. That's why it's called NOR. It stands for not OR, I think. And there's your recipe, a NOR gate. Let's go throw it on our ground over here somewhere. I'm running out of ground space. I'm going to have to you know, flatten out some more terrain for you guys, I think. 
put it here. And the same deal as the OR gate, but you'll notice that it's on already, because no inputs are enabled. And you can disable your inputs by right-clicking, same with the OR gate, pretty much the same functionality. And turning on any one of these guys will disable the output. All outputs have to be off in order for this to be functional. Since I covered the NOR gate, I might as well cover the NAND gate. A NAND gate is defined as the output is off when all inputs are on. So it's kind of the opposite. So just knock this guy off here. With the outputs off, or with, I'm sorry, with the inputs off, the output is on. And either one of these guys keeps it on. But if both are on, the output is off. So there you go. Let's build one real quick. And there's your recipe, the NAND gate. Drop this guy right here. Same deal as an AND gate, pretty much, right? Just the opposite. This guy will be on until all outputs are on. Then it's off. So, the opposite of an AND, pretty much. So the next gate I want to show you guys is the exclusive OR gate. Um, the exclusive OR gate is a gate similar to the OR gate, called an XOR, and remember with the OR gate, one or the other could be on, but if both were on, it was just the same as one or the other being on, there's no difference. Well, with exclusive OR, only one or the other can be on, but not both. So let's take a look at that gate. Yeah, this guy's a little complicated. And no, I did not know this one off the top of my head, I had to go look it up on the Minecraft wiki. Uh, but this is an exclusive OR, pretty complicated. But you can see that if one is on, the output up there is on, or the other, but not both. So exclusively or. In other words, the two outputs have to be the opposite of each other. So one on and one off. But if they're the same as each other, then the output is off. So let's build one of these giant dudes in red power. And there you go, guys. Exclusive or gate. XOR. Pretty spiffy. As you can see, much smaller than that crazy design we just did. And of course, works with red alloy wiring. And you can right click it. No, you can't right click it, I lied. So there you go. You can see that it's only got two sides that you can connect the red alloy wire to. This side does not connect. Let's see, can we right click it? we can. So when one side is on, the output is on, but when both sides are on, it is not. And ignore that other thing that I just connected to, because it's obviously not part of this pattern. But uh, yep, so only one side being on equals output on, both sides is failed. So you got the gist. Alright guys, next pattern for you here is one I'm not going to do. Um, basically because it would be way too big and complicated and I wouldn't even know where to begin on building something like aw as awesome as the timer. The timer is so cool, you're going to love it in about a second as soon as I show you what it does. Just place it down on the ground and you'll see it's got this nifty little rotating thingy. And you can have an output slot and you can have some input slots. And if you connect redstone current to one of the input slots, any one, it's going to stop the timer from running. If you right click on the timer, you can set up the interval. Right now it's set to pulse every two seconds. You can make it five seconds. And look how much slower it's moving. And every five seconds, it'll send out a little redstone pulse. You can go down as low as 0.2 seconds. But that gets annoying pretty quick. every one second, you get the point. You can make it every 80 seconds or every minute and 20 seconds. Pretty cool. So that is the timer, and I wouldn't even know where to begin building something as, that, as cool as that. You definitely can't build something that makes it so easy to adjust the time with simple redstone. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap up this episode right now because it's uh, 
got a lot of things covered, and I want to cover the rest of the logic circuits in part two. So this has been part one of the Red Power Logic Circuits. Look forward to part two, where I cover a couple more gates and a couple cool machines. Um, similar to the timer, there's a couple other ones that do some cool stuff that you probably wouldn't be able to find easily uh, with simple redstone. So, coming up soon, take it easy.